Local Moranzi can also be used in cases where global Moranzi gives an incorrect global measure of autocorrelation on a map. Here we have a map that's split up into four different uh, spatial regimes. In this spatial regime, and the locations in this spatial regime, we see that high values tend to cluster with high values, and low values tend to cluster with low values. So the autocorrelation, say the global autocorrelation of a map that would consist of just those two regimes would be an I much greater than zero. This is almost perfect positive autocorrelation. But in this same map, we also have the two other spatial regimes. And in these two regimes, we see that high and low values are perfectly intermixed. And the I statistic computed, say, on these two spatial regimes would be much less than zero. Right? We have almost perfect negative autocorrelation. So the cross product terms for all of these locations would be negative, and the cross product terms in the locations in these two regimes will be positive. So when we add up the sum of the sum of the two cross product terms, W times the cross products, this is going to equal something close to zero. So these positive cross product terms are going to counteract these negative cross product terms. And Moran's I for this map will equal something close to zero. So the global statistic is telling us that there's no spatial pattern in this map, which is clearly a misrepresentation of the true spatial pattern. And this is another argument for why we need to use local Moran's I because it's certainly possible that equal amounts of positive and negative autocorrelation exist on a map, and therefore any global statistic of spatial pattern on this map is going to miss out on the true spatial pattern that exists.